Hey guys, it's the Solution Artist, Bobby F. Perriar here, sitting with my good friend Karen Ritchie, Karen V. Ritchie now, after our conversation. Uh, you guys all know me, I'm a, I'm a numerologist, and, and Karen actually does something very interesting uh, inside, of, uh, inside of our group, and it's funny how her and, I are, and my conversation sounds very the same, but our modalities are kind of different. So it's super uh, nice to bring out you. I, I'm super blessed that you take the time to do this with me. Karen, how's it going? So good. How are you doing? I'm doing really excited. It's a crazy new month and there's so much energy going on. I'm like busy with all kinds of things, getting married this month, basically doing a lot of cool stuff. And uh, yeah, I, I know that we're, uh, even right now, you're even you're going through a lot of energy, I guess, what, there's like repairs and uh, some chaos happening. You know, there's storms at the place. Like there's a lot of stuff going on over where you're at. Electric. <laughs> Everything is so magnified and electric, it feels this month. And it's only four days in, five days in. You felt it, right? You felt that yeah. thing that happened, like, just right at the beginning of the month. It was like, <laughs> engines yeah. off. And we're just like, all right, let's get, let's get this started. Nuts. So uh, I, I'm super blessed to have you here. I, I you know, I, many people are going to be like, so who's Karen? Like, what's, what's the deal there? And would love to share their, your story with them. But uh, I'd like to let you pick and think, you know, which is the one that you want to, uh, that you want to tell? Like, what's the story about you that we're like, you know, that, that people need to hear? Well, first I'll introduce myself by letting you know who I am and what I do. Uh, so my name is Karen V. Ritchie. Thanks to Bobby. Uh, and I am a functional nutrition practitioner where I guide individuals who work within the online space to identify the cause behind their emotional cravings. So what I've been learning about and what I teach is that there's more to nutrition than just your physical activity and the stuff you put on your plate because, you know, <laughs> our emotions play a huge role in everything that we do, including your nutrition. And my focus on what I do is to help people in the online space to get out of their as if mentality and live in their real state of life to get rid of the triggers, pulling them back into their bad habits and bringing them back into a state of unhappiness, unhealthiness. And so because of our emotions, you know, can come from childhood and bringing them up, but we can block them out and forget about them or past relationship or even your own with yourself, self abandonment. My job is to help people acknowledge and live in it so they can get rid of it for good. Unreal. And it was such a super profound experience now that I'm even just looking back, remember this when we were working together, uh, because of how much I attached eating to, like I attached it to so much. And it was just like this constant clearing of all of this energy that was existing in me. Uh, you know, just by basically having a conversation with you, I was like, literally like, Oh my God. Like the certain different types of food I eat, the different emotions that I actually processed or, or were not processing through the diet that I had. Um, it's crazy for people who don't really know where I'm at in my journey right now. It's about reclaiming my health and I want to uh, you know, become a, a better physical being. I've spent a lot of time fixing my spiritual side, but you can only go so far if you're not congruent on the exterior as well. So before I was like not able to go to the gym. I wasn't even thinking about healthy foods. Um, but, I, but of course I bring in a woman in my life, like Sally, my life, my lady, she's, uh, she's, she's into cooking healthy. She doesn't like eating processed things. She's conscious about it. So I knew that I wanted to be there, but you get stuck in the place that you're in or the, the just the, the lifestyle that we live, you know, and, and I guess that's a cop out as well, just to call it the lifestyle but a lot of people eat negative foods all the time. And so when we got a chance to connect, I was like, this is so super cool. Maybe it's just me and my personal experience because of, you know, uh, how much I had self-esteem I, I dealt with uh, growing up, getting teased on by eating and all of this thing. And then to look at it now as an entrepreneur, it's so cool that you've kind of like built, because you, you built your business based on helping people through this, but also at, from an entrepreneur perspective, yeah. Yeah, definitely. My, I think this is a long time standing for me because when I worked with you and I got my report, it told me that I should focus on body and using my body and um, intellect and intuitive to help others with their own health. 
And on it, it said I should become a, a holistic uh, nutrition something or other. And I was like, well, this is so strange because that's what I'm doing. And I got the report far along after I've already been studying, studying this. And how I got into what I'm doing now is I think partial fell in my lap, but partial was a work in making through like my own childhood experiences with my own issues and stuff that I've gone through many different forms of rock bottom for me to bring myself out of it. Um, and these experiences are very powerful to help other people in their own, own journeys as well. Uh, do you think it's okay? Cause usually what I do when I'm, when I'm interviewing someone for the cast, um, I I'm like pulling up your chart. Okay. So yeah. is, is it Go okay ahead. to talk a little bit about that and see yeah. what is? Open book. Yep. So we look at numbers inside of Karen's like chart here. She, she, your, your birthday, you're born on a seven day. Okay. So this is like what happens when I add the day of your birth together. And I'm not going to just pull all of your stuff out. Obviously, you're going to keep this a little bit uh, like, you know, like just, just to call it a seven day, a seven in a few of your names. This seven that shows up is almost like a spiritual awareness. So there's going to be this, this context of um, intuitive or um, like, you, know, you can kind of pull on the fine threads of awareness inside of your spirit's mind. And they sort of show up in and out of through your chart, right? So it's nice to be able to see that, but it gives us an understanding that when you're intuiting or channeling or making a connection for someone, that there's this sense of like, this comes from something bigger. So I'd like to really acknowledge that there's that spiritual love and care that shows up. But then on the other side of this, we also see things like threes and sixes, and these numbers are going to start to show up to make her very pleasant and also super social, like you're going to be nice and fun when you talk to people, but you'll also be delivering them like a loving message. So I like to see that these two things come together in this, but did you ever think it was going to be holistic nutrition? Like, was that always a thing? No, I had no interest in health <laughs> for <laughs> a majority of my life. And most of my life from childhood to about 30 years old, uh, I suffered with horrible autoimmune issues, eczema, body image all the stuff and I recently actually found a journal that I wrote when I was like 13 how like body shaming myself and different things and today it's so funny because I'm the complete opposite I'm I'm a strong ass independent like self-assured self-unconditionally loved unapologetic woman today and I have no shame in how my message comes across because I know it resonates because it's so on point like you can't confuse it with anything you know, with the, cause we see things in her chart as well that are going to say things like an 11 or when we, with these double numbers, double threes, she got double twos. This is indicative of a mastery course that you're on. Like you're not just going to run around through life and just find a nice, quiet, easy little job. When we see numbers like this, it's like, look, I'm going to go through some stuff so that when I get out of it, I can help other people who are going through it as well. And I felt that when you were when you and I were talking, and I granted your uh, middle name looks like a name that I have, so I know what it's like to go through the body shaming and then not really telling anybody, but being kind of like uh, bullying to myself. And yeah. this is why I was always like, I can't. I'm not the type of guy who's going to exercise every day. Like, is there like a pill that I can take? And I tried <laughs> them all. I've tried all the pills and all the you know detox, detox, and you know all these different types of weird things. And nothing feels as good as actually getting and exercising. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know, right? But uh, to, to see that you, you really embody both of these are pretty cool. So, so like, cause it blew my mind to see that you were pulling on these things. Because on one side, it's holistic nutrition. But on the other side, it's connected to experiences or connected to things that are emotionally blocking us. And this is the part that really had me curious. Because I was like, what? <laughs> It's, it's like, you know, my psychological pattern of why I'm eating the way I am or what's going on or what that means about me. And this is the part that I was like, what? Cause I was, cause it was, it, it felt like, like I was being validated for the stuff that I eat and the way that I treated my body. And in doing so, it really empowered me to look over top of it. I thought that was really interesting. Like what's going on there? Is that, is that like a learned <laughs> skill or cause you, you said that part of it came to you. A part of it was learned. So we have to pay attention to the fact that there's like a, a deeper spiritual intuition going on in here. I listen. I hear. I don't just hear to reply. I hear the person, what they're saying and the habits that, that, that how they're 
In my schooling education, we are trained to not only read the words coming out of people's mouths, but to understand the body language, even though a majority of my clients are all off camera because I want them to feel in a safe place where they are able to be who they want to be and not worry about fixing their hair like I see on videos, fixing their hair and oh my God, I'm like, I don't care about that shit. We want to get to the bottom mm -hmm. of what's going on. So let's have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you. I could tell what stresses were for you based on your tone of voice, the words you were using, the context of those words, and then the history that, that you gave me a tiny little bit of history. I was able to hear you for who you are, Bobby, and bring it out of you to address it. And you were like, there are a lot of silent pauses in there. And I do that a lot with my clients, silent pauses, because they need to be able to reflect and hear what they're saying. Is this energy I'm talking about mine or did someone give me that idea about myself? And so now I've been living that truth of someone else's idealization of who I am wow. or, or an addiction or a trigger or something, which isn't just always food, right? We all have things in our past that make decisions for us and we are kind of really lazy and weak to address it and acknowledge it and this is when self-harm comes and we talked about this as well with like specific food cravings you know if someone ha uh, is in an emotional abusive relationship they may have like sweet or crunchy cravings for things it doesn't matter what the food is but they're going to indulge in it and we talked about for you some anxieties and stuff can come up um, and you would go for chips and stuff and I said to you it's because you want to be heard and validated and also block out the outside noise that is bringing you the anxiety and that was kind of one of the things that made you be like WTF <laughs> what is happening here yeah whatever okay I got human problems too <laughs> sorry and I called you out <laughs> whatever. it's all good this is the whole point is that I basically broadcast the problems in my life so that I can help other people get through it and I mean that's one of the I mean I I I've gotten quick to that game uh, when it be started to become successful. Before then, it would just be like, I don't know what you're talking about. No, no, no. Now it's just like, yeah, no, it's profound. And, you know, this is why I really wanted to have you here because, you know, people need to hear this. They need to understand this. And for me, a lot of my depression and a lot of my disassociation from myself, you know, has been building my whole life. And, you know, you never get a chance to go in properly. It wasn't until like 2019, 2018, um, the end of 2018 into this year that I was like, I need to, I want to take my health seriously. And in doing so, I have to figure this stuff out. And then, you know, it wasn't like, I need to find someone like Karen. Like, you know, it was like, we're in the same group, we're in the same community. And next thing you know, your name surfaces and we get a chance to do your numbers. And I'm like, wait a minute, I'm actually going through things. Like I had colonics done this year. We did resets in our liver and our kidney and all that good stuff. And, you know, like cleanses and fasts and diets and exercise. So wanting to talk to someone like you really helped me because I'm a super spiritual kind of guy, link that to the conversation. And for me, that was where the huge profound awareness was because I'm like, Stop it. Stop it. No, 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 no. Because it was so true for me. I was just sitting there being like, wow. And I remember the phase in my life when I would kept on, I kept buying more and more food from like, uh, like, you know, drive through. And I would say things like, like, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll save some for later. And then that way I'll have a couple meals. I'll buy a couple meals at once through a drive through and mm -hmm. like this really negatively treating myself area uh, of processed foods and greasy foods and like fried foods and all of that stuff. And you know, it's, it's it, great. The pleasure's there for like a minute, but then the bad dreams happen. You get sluggish, you, your skin turns a really weird color. You don't have the energy for anything. And uh, yeah, it's just super nuts to think that, that this conversation is so important. And uh, I, even, even when I'm working with my clients, I'm always telling people how connected your gut is to your brain and how it's like your second brain. And so there could be a lot of really huge golden nuggets that you open up because of this conversation that are like, well, you should look at this. Because when I look at this, I see it inside of people's numbers. Mm -hmm. but you get a chance to see it in the result of their actions that they show up with and, and we treat her. And so how does this relate back to entrepreneurism? Because you know, a lot of people think well, you, 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 the common thread behind your clients around your, your uh, audience is that they're all looking to become financially successful on some level. Yeah, yeah. They're all affiliate marketers, multi-level marketers, or just anyone 
on an online surface for, for work. So talk, I want to go back to the gut health for just a second. Um, I, I've spoken to this, well, to everybody, or you've seen me post about it or someone has. It's, I talk about this religiously almost to, to like a fault. I mean, your gut has 20,000 neurons in it. I've explained this before. Your gut has 20,000 neurons. If you have a cat or a dog or anything, some of them, like Logan, you know, he's pretty smart, goofy little guy. His brain length wave is in my gut. Like, that's how much microbiome and biomes and, and bacteria and different um, neurological aspects are in our gut. And so I talk a lot about, my company is called Love Always, and it's called this for a reason, because without being real, you cannot heal anything. And without self-love and unconditional, you are pretty much floating down a river without a paddle and you don't know where to go. You're webbing and flowing and doing all these directions, but you can't ever get balanced in a straight line to get to where you need to go. So if your gut and your heart are not aligned and, and they're not talking to each other appropriately, that head brain up top is just really, it's just, just a muscle floating in 80% fat. And it bobs and weaves is everywhere in there. And that's the one we pay too much attention on because you cannot heal anything with your mindset unless your heart and gut are actually connected. And if your heart and gut are not connected, you're going to create disease. You're going to create anxieties. You're going to create depressions. You're going to create all these cravings and different things. It's not always about eating the right foods to fix your gut. Sometimes it's about having the conversation to tell your subconscious to take a hike for a minute so the heart and the gut can get together and have an actual like conference and decide what do we need because every decision and thought you make it does not come from up top the logical it comes from the gut you feel it there first everything that you're talking to me about you've thought about it first in your gut and your heart confirmed it and then you spoke it <laughs> but sometimes you see that what happens in the gut is that you keep feeding it bad foods and then yep. they, you know you can't communicate with that correctly again you can't, and sometimes that bad food is the words we use and the things we read and all the things we consume from the logical standpoint, and we can't differentiate what's real and what's not for us. We're reading so many books and podcasts, which I appreciate. However, sometimes some people in the online space are so obsessed with articulating word for word somebody else's work, and they think it sounds good, so they make it their truth but don't take the time and effort to find their actual truth. And this is when they get in the depression, the anxiety, and I can't be successful. Well, let's have a conversation about that. Why can't you be calm? Why can't you be successful? Is where you're at right now, not where you're supposed to be? How come you have to be 10 steps ahead of yourself or have that six figures tomorrow? What will change for you? Nothing. You'll get worse because you haven't dealt with today. Oh, 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 oh. That's a big one. Money doesn't make you better, right? Instant gratification with the, the, the drive through, right? You want more of, I can, I can afford this today, so I'm going to buy more of it. Really, you just wasted time and energy. You did not eat all that extra food. You probably threw it out. Mm. It no longer was a, a, attractive to you. That's true. Oh, I remember we were talking about that, and you're like, that's, that's more of a sign of your ego than it really is even a sign of your hunger. And yeah. I'll, I can't you. I remember that feeling, but you didn't say it like that. But you said something very similar. I'm very direct <laughs> in my approach, but it's all love. It's all love because love always. You end a letter, love always. Everything ends in that. And at the end of the day, if you can go to bed and say, "My day was shit. Things sucked in it, but I'm actually good. I'm 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 one with myself. I'm okay. I still love myself." And what? Oh. What would happen if the question we were to ask ourselves, rather than what would so-and-so do, what would happen if I loved myself? Mm. What would I do if I loved myself? Yeah, my Sally says, what would love do? That's what uh, she's really adopted as well. And even myself, my, my first book is, will be titled, I'm writing it, Love Fearlessly. And so yeah. I, I love this feeling of, of, of that, that, this, that cosmic force of really helping people through. And it's nuts, because I'm looking at your chart while we're talking. And this is a transcendence, okay? Because we look at your middle name and it literally has the opposite in its vibration. And when someone, ha it, and I will have to attest to the fact that you're born in the 80s, so you've, you've figured some <laughs> of this stuff out already, you need yeah. to through some, some stages of your life already, that this is like, look, this, this is the power that I can. Some people do not come to this power ever in their life. They're caught underneath the negative vibration and they never champion over it. Whereas we look and we see, oh my gosh, this is a really transcendent feeling to think that your middle name would speak of 
uh, negative self-communication or mm -hmm. lack of self-communication. So when you pioneer and petition for it and speak the way you do, guys, this is like, like spine tingling stuff. Okay. You have to respect and, and, and honor that people get challenged by these things. And then there will be some who, who challenge the challenge and absolutely win it. So for me, I'm like, absolutely. Yes. Very, very much. So you should absolutely have a conversation about what's really happening within you. Because I believe for me that, you know, we, we all have to, we all have to grow and you're not going to, you're going to need to find a different place to learn from and grow from. But uh, Karen, the reason why I wanted to have you here was because these are one of those conversations that I need help having because when I'm, for me, I never placed that priority, but when I'm talking to my clients, I also see these same levels of conversation that I'm having with them thinking that, that your, what you eat is a reflection of what you're feeling and, or even like how you treat your body. Cause sometimes energy collects, right. But it's, it's very interesting because sometimes it collects in a health concern and other times it collects in a habit. You have people who smoke too much or people who drink too much. So I guess food is just the, it's like just the quick little example in, in this story or cause you said it's not always, it's not always food where addiction comes in. You know, you, Oh, it looks like I can't, you can't unmute. Hold on. See if I can unmute you. Yay. <laughs> cool. Got it. Continue. Uh, yeah. So, um, you said, cause it, it's not just food, right? There are oh. other things in there. So can we like, is there a way to map out what it means if you smoke too much or if you drink too much, is there a difference in where like, cause if it's the gut and then, you know, maybe it's going to be the lungs this time, or maybe it'll be the kidneys. If you're drinking, does that have to do a lot with where the different energy is stored up and challenged? Yeah, because smoking is the same as anxiety or stress. You do it to get away from something or a lot of people will, who are smokers will instantly after a meal, will go outside and have a, a cigarette. It's like a dessert for them. Uh, there is about a teaspoon of sugar per every cigarette. So any person who tries to quit smoking and have these sweet food cravings overeat, it's because you're addicted to sugar. You're, sh you're having a cigarette because you, after you have sex, oh, a cigarette or anything enjoyable. Oh, a cigarette, 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 cigarette. I need more of that. I need more of that in me to calm me and make me feel good and balanced, right? Or a high or a buzz. That's what that stems from. You're lacking in like loneliness. Whoever gets depressed, how much do they have to go outside for a cigarette or they're at work and they're like, oh, it's so exhausting and chaotic in my office. I'm going to go have a five minute cigarette. Have right? Fun. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, you're substituting for that like loneliness of feeling like you're needing more of something or appreciation or acknowledgement. Okay. So, well, I mean, like back in 2013, I, uh, I stopped smoking. I, what, what happened was I started smoking in 2010. And it was uh, smoking dubs, right? We we're smoking weed, we're and and we're small kids, like like high school. And then mm -hmm. uh, next thing you know, I didn't like that I was smelling so bad. I was self conscious of it, so I started smoking great cigarillos, like you know, mm -hmm. like little tiny mini cigars to cover the smell. And uh, it just got worse, and it ended up being that I would smoke a dube and then have a have a cigarillo afterwards, uh, yeah. you know, so that I wouldn't have to uh, smell so bad. And then it got to the point where even it was, it was 2013 that I ran out on Mother's Day and I just never bought smokes again. But then a few years later, I started vaping. And this is that same challenge to think that, you know, oh, it's not as, um, it's not as uh, you know, um, like disastrous or bad for my health, right? But Sally didn't like it, you know? And so I, I cut it out and cut it down in my life. So it's very, very minimal. But this reality is there to think that what you do and you know all these things that are in there they they have counter balances towards so what about when someone is a, and so what about drinking because for me that's never really been something that I ever got into I mean I can have some drinks but usually if I go out drinking I'm going to get really drunk and not remember or not uh, be able to survive the night uh, because I never do it I'm not I'm not someone who does that all the time like maybe once a year that'll happen yeah yeah, alcohol is interesting because it can be triggered as a celebration or it could be as a, a numbing agent. So when people have a craving for something, they, if anyone who is listening to this right now, if you're going to grab a substance of any sort, whether it be a drug, whether it be food, whether it be a shopping spree or alcohol, 
what happened in your day that this thought came up for you? What happened? Because it doesn't just happen. For an example, if someone had a bad day at work, are they going to go home and be like, I cannot wait to have a big, fresh salad that fills me up with vitamins and nutrients. And, oh, I just can't wait to dress it with olive oil and lemon. Mm -mm -mm. No, I'm going to have beer on my patio and I'm going to have nachos. And I'm going to have pizza or wings or who wants to go to the pub tonight? It's been such a long day. <laughs> in our life with things that comfort us, just like chicken noodle soup. If your mom or grandma made it for you when you're sick, that's what you gravitate to. It has no medical benefit to it. It's just comfort. <laughs> we did this the other night where I can't remember what happened in the day, but then we're like, okay, let's watch a movie and have a bag of chips between me and Sally. It was last night or the night before. And like, and, and I don't want to, I mean, you also, when we're talking, you're like, Hey, don't feel guilty about like yeah. Your life. <laughs> yeah. Can you repeat that part of our session so that people, because <laughs> everybody's like, Oh my God, I can't do anything. <laughs> we all, we all go through shit. It's inevitable. If you go home and you have a bad day and have something to compensate for that, whatever, do it. But just be mindful and not mindful of filling your head with thoughts. Being mindful of the fact that um, I forgive myself for doing this because, you know, I am love. I am whole. Holistic is whole. Our heart is whole. Whatever we have to do to bring it together and not cause um, a ripple effect in addiction moving forward. And also, I just want to say that addiction and anxiety can get misconstrued for each other. Because an addiction could be something we need, need, need. An addiction is more uh, reckless. Anxiety is really less controllable as where addiction does have a control factor to it. And anxiety just kind of spurses up. But sometimes we get addicted to using the word anxiety. And if you don't know if you're addicted or have an anxiety problem, you should check uh, medically and get that figured out uh, for yourself. But for have an, an anxiety would be something like, having a craving for something because you had a bad day, I'm going to, I'm going to like uh, numb my anxiety with a food or a drink or something, but it's not reckless. you know, you're doing it. You're aware of it. Don't feel bad for that. You're allowed to have comfort in your life. You know, you're allowed to do that. And the thing where people get so beat up themselves with is the fact that they have this emotional connection to bad food, good food. You could see someone who's totally completely healthy and eat the shit, most shit of food the horrible stuff, and they're like golden child, athletic, healthy, good skin, good hair. It's not a genetic thing. It's the fact they're happy and love themselves inside, that they know if they eat this one thing today, it's not going to affect them tomorrow. It's a new day tomorrow. It's a new hour from this hour. Change something. So true. And it, it's crazy because like, you know, back, back to me being the ultimate guinea pig here, um, I grew up with a lot of depression, a lot of self-worth belief. Uh, a lot of this stuff that was basically, I felt like I wasn't good enough or that people were judging me or making fun of me behind my back. And like all of this stuff you, was like just stuff that haunted me. And, uh, you know, I, you, you'd get lost in things like, you know, I'm just going to go and smoke a bag of weed or I don't, I don't care about anyone else. Or even or like, you know, I, I, I hid at jobs. I would hide at a job and then on my way home, I'd go and on the weekend. It'd be like a 30 to $60 trip to 7-Eleven. And then uh, a forty to eighty dollar bag of weed, and then just basically play video games and sit by myself all weekend. You know, just going through. Oh, I gotta have my crunchies. I gotta have my chipsies. I gotta have my gummies. I gotta have my chocolateies, and then some drink here and uh, some meat here. And it was really not so cool. And then you know the energy drinks, and oh my god! Like, trust me, guys, I have like ripped my body through the ringer when it comes to how you treat your, how, how to mistreat yourself. Um, yeah. So, you know, it's with a lot of embarrassment that I listen to some of this stuff. I'm like, Oh God. Yeah. But don't be embarrassed. Cause you're a human being, right? We go through stuff. Like you're not the only one who has gone through stuff, but you're the only one feeling your feelings. Right. And that's the thing is people feel so guilt. I wrote about today. I was like, what, what would happen if you just said, it's okay. I forgive myself. I love myself one thing you said was, I don't care in that sentence. I don't care. Perfect. Self, uh, you're self harming yourself, self abusing. I don't care. I'm taking all this on me because something in my outer world allowed to come into my inner world and affect that some way. So you had your crunchies, which was anxiety. So you were lonely. So you, so you numbed yourself by saying, whatever, I don't care. 
I am whatever, like nothing matters to me. Perfect. Neither does your health then because you're reflecting that. Second of all, the energy drink is you're lacking energy, lack of motivation, lack of perseverance, lack of, lack of you. And so you drank something to help that, but it didn't do anything. You know, it just kept you there. It didn't change anything for you in that moment. You, when you ate all that stuff and played all the games and numbed out and the I don't care mentality, good for you. <laughs> Nothing's happening. You still don't care, right? It didn't fix anything. It didn't. So what do you do to get out of that? It's hard. It's hard to get out of that. And that's the people need to be vocal. Need to be vocal about their experiences with people and not be ashamed that they're going through a bad time. Don't ever be ashamed of that. Don't ever feel guilty for being sad or upset or if you're mad and you feel like you need to get emotional and cry, then do it. And when people talk about what society says, are you not a part of society? Do you not live in this world? Other people's truths don't have to be yours. Other people's emotions and feelings and lack of are not yours. You get to decide. You have ability. Mm. And you can choose, is this moment, and we see this everywhere, you know, five minutes can be a bad day or five years of your life, but, you know, if you're having a bad moment, go ahead and sit in that bad moment, but don't live in it. Just truth. It's actually funny. I, I feel like I have spent about five years living in a bad day and, it, and like, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, you look back at this now and like, okay, get it. You have a bad day, but they're, you know, we, we switched the, the wording around at our house. Our kids no longer get grounded. They go for a recharge. Like, mm -hmm. Plug in like, okay, let's go and recharge. And uh, when we, when we're recharged, we'll, uh, we'll be, we'll be fine again. Right. And yep. they don't have the same negative con like connotation. And then so I was like, Hey, I'd love to get a recharge. Can I recharge? <laughs> and Absolutely. Like, grounded. I'd love to be grounded. I just want to get grounded all day. And then, so I told my little girl this morning, I'm like, okay, mommy's going to get, mommy's going to be grounded all day. And then I went away and then I heard, I heard her be like, mommy, you have to go to your room. You're grounded. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's so cool to have this conversation because like, for me, I, this is my life. Like I, I, and I know that like, I've had to go through these experiences, but when you're like, how do you get through them? I'm looking at myself. I'm like, I get fired. I heartbroken or like, I'm, I almost like overdose or something stupid in my life happens to like happened to, uh, you know, wake me up and to help me get to the next stage, the next place. And there's that breakthrough. So I like that you're creating a safe space around, yo, it's okay to fall apart because mm -hmm. for me, I'm like, yeah, because afterwards you end up telling the story that you were in once you're no longer in it. And that's usually what I'm, what my biggest goal in, in this life or planet or my life is to help people get past the things that they're getting going through so that they can help other people do the same. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm like, this is just, and it, who know who, who knew it took me on a health journey the way it did and how many emotions would be tied to that. No idea. I had no clue and you know it's funny when now when i'm at the gym i go and i run and i run for like 15 to 20 minutes or do the elliptical right yeah. and uh and then you know i'm at a certain point where i need to start negotiating with my body <laughs> i'm like thinking you know what the thought is my food is why did i eat that yesterday that's basically the what's going on in my head is like oh that was such bad food and like you know they, it shows up in that regard to think mm -hmm. this is why I'm running. This is the energy that I'm pulling back out. And so I like to think that I'm starting to balance it out and not have the yeah. guilt around it. But at the same time, I am making a move forward to become a bigger vessel and a more powerful one. Uh, I think it was Richard Branson who said that, you know, your most important investments in your body and your health. And if you want to be successful financially, you should work out and exercise every single day. And I was like, well, that's pretty cool that that sort of shows up. But the fact mm -hmm. that you're now putting these two together we are blessed and very, very grateful to have uh, your level of expertise. It's such a neat pocket of the personal achievement world. I mean, do you get that? That this is a spiritual thing that meets a food thing? Or is oh, it yeah. a health food? It's, 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 but that's Both. Like you, you, you have to, if, if, you wanna, if you really want to practice spirituality and you really want to get into your intuitive, you better make sure your food's in, in accordance with that. 
you know, but then on the other side of it, a lot of people, I didn't have an addiction that I didn't have any kinds of addictions, but I had a brother who is very addicted to many faucets of different things who has um, gotten into trouble with the law a lot. And from that experience, it taught me to know that all my decisions are the conversations I'm having in my head. And I get to decide where those conversations go. I get to decide that. You know, and so the other thing with people who are spiritual and stuff, they go, like you said, you went through some downhills and you had some addictions and you had some things that you had to fight through. And a lot of spiritual people have to go through those things. Me, my struggles uh, in my past were, I'm trying to identify like my belonging because I always felt like an outsider to a lot of things. I was always the quiet one, which is weird because I'm very vocal now, but I was always the one to told you know, like quiet your voice. Don't talk about that anymore. We don't want to hear about that and to be shushed. And so my conversation used to be like, just be sick, quiet and silent because nobody wants to hear what you have to say. What you have to say is useless or whatever. And I decided like, you know what? I actually have a lot of information and knowledge to share with people. I have a lot to tell people. I have a lot to give people. I'm here for a purpose and a reason. And like, you know this, I used to work in hotel for like almost 14 years. And I think that too also attributed to what I do today because I've heard so many stressful people in hotels, so many health issues, so many crazy stories working in there that I think that developed even more for me. And it took me getting stabbed at my recent uh, last job in November, 2018 to finally be like, okay, Karen, you have a gift. You should actually maybe utilize that now because this you're just wasting your time and energy and having that conversation with myself in that vulnerable moment uh, really stood out to me that you need to be out here helping people and talking to people about what's going on in life. Now, is that like a spiritual energetic stabbing or was that like a client that was like, where's my roof service? No, this is, so I'll, I'll get to the story. Um, it was Halloween, actually, October 31st. And I went into my, I was working night audit, so overnight graveyard shift. A pumpkin fell off the mantle. There's no way it could have fallen off by just itself. It was on there. It fell off uh, head down. So face was up, perfect circle. And there was like uh, a dragging above me <laughs> of a chair. There, that room was empty. The security guard came in and this homeless man came in from the side door. And I've had conversations with this guy before, like he can't come in here. Um, so I don't know how he got in, but long story short is that this spirit was very loud. Like, watch out, this night's gonna get exciting for you. Um, and at that point I was already in my head, like I can't keep working this, like I gotta pay off my school and then I'm out of here. But I never, I kept staying cause it was easy money, right? So I kept staying, I knew my job, I knew the hotel, whatever. And this sound was vibrating loud and heavier and heavier and heavier footsteps, like door slamming sounds. And the security came in right at the same time and was hearing it. So I know I wasn't going crazy. Like I knew I wasn't just like lacking sleep <laughs> that night. Um, and the, the, the homeless man came in the bathroom and was shooting drugs in his legs. And he attacked the security guard and then ran after me and just stabbed me in my shoulder. Luckily, it wasn't like severely hurt or anything, but it was enough for me to say like, I, universe I, is like, you want to hear a joke today? This is going to be so funny. Guess what's going to happen? And yeah, this is where I sit today on your podcast because not just because of that, but that was like the final awakening moment. Like, uh, we see you, we hear you. Let's get like, wake up. Let's wake up already. Wow. That's crazy. For anybody who's like paying attention and that's super cool. Right. One eleven. <laughs> right now, like, just you can see it. I yeah, love, confirmation. Love Confirm yeah, uh, confirmation from spirit. And it's nuts because you know, well, you just buying your own biz, but that's crazy that that happened. And, and, you know, I'm glad that you had to, I mean, for again, how do you, how do you get out of it? Uh, you know, um, like how do you move out of that energy? And I'm thinking, well, an experience is going to probably happen and, and a catalytic event is going to, is going to come down. And so that was, I would like to say that that was yours, but I look at your chart and I notice that there's two sides to you. There's this super spiritual and very divinely connected to source. You're going to get the one, one ones. And then after when you, when, once that has run its course, there's a fun and darling energy that just wants to enjoy and that just wants to grow up to be a big kid. So this is what your, your birthday is saying to me, that, that all of this massive level of spiritual energy holds a purpose and you kind of have to get it out of the way and in the front. And I'm glad that it happened, you know, earlier than later. 
uh, you know, we're still while you were young in life. How long have you been doing this? So five been, years. Five years. Yeah. Now, uh, I've been, I've known numerology for five years. I've been in business for about two and a half years now. And, uh, you know, there's a very like strong, when someone sticks with something and I like to pull myself as an example, my intuition, my level of conversation, my ability to be fluent with what I'm doing really starts to build. So when we, when you can see that you're put in street credit, this wasn't like, oh, I'm just going to try to be, uh, you know, a, a therapist or a nutritionist or something, you know, you've actually put it in, you, you've gotten educated. So, you know, for anybody who needs the certifications in case, you know, like, oh my God, let me see your papers. You just graduated from a program or from a certification you were going for? Um, I graduated from the Institute of Integrative Nutrition. I studied with the School of Functional Medicine, and now um, I am training with Precision to get some more science-y physical stuff out of the way. There you go. Cool. That's awesome. So you're investing in yourself. You're investing in other people. This is, for me, why I really want to like hang around people like you because we, I, I – it, it's nice to know that people are having this, this real conversation with others and you make it real as well too. Like you're not, you don't turn it into a science project because I'm thinking, Oh, if you're depressed or you have anxiety, you're lacking a certain enzyme in your cell. And it's like a fight or flight mechanism based on the nutrients that you're feeding yourself. So on a bio level, there is a very logical explanation for all of this. Yeah. But on the spiritual level, there's an even more profound reason as to why we're experiencing what we do. So how do you like balance? With, I guess it's just so what you can know it and say you got street cred and school cred, like, or what's the deal with, with you becoming certified and qualified? Um, five years ago, I was hospitalized because I was breathing in black mold and didn't know it. And from age zero to then, I was on a, an amazing amount of steroid creams, antibiotics, in and out of the hospital for eczema and various types of autoimmune diseases where I was always told, you're healthy, you're totally healthy, you're fine. My, I had tubes down my throat and up my nose. What part of that looks healthy to you with bags under my eyes? Mm -hmm. Like, I, I was like, gosh, my skin was yellow, my eyes were red my heart was stopping. My liver was failing because of the medications that my doctors were prescribing me for allergies and different stuff, just kind of throwing mud against the wall. So the last, in 2015, 2014, um, when I was hospitalized, uh, you know, I couldn't even get a yes or no word out of my mouth as how sick I was. And it wasn't like I induced that sickness, but on another level, I kind of did because in functional medicine uh, and nutrition, we describe, we, we want to know the whole entire spectrum of a person, not just an isolate, um, isolated symptom. Mm. Because it could be, you know, you're having heart palpitations, but it also could be, or someone could think they're having a heart attack, but what it could be is just simply either stress, or it could be that something bad happened in their day, or it could be a combination of food, stress, anxiety, maybe you're lonely, maybe your environment sex, maybe you just read something really bad on the news. It's all psychological and the cells that you're talking about, when we feed in negative energy, feeding, so I want to just point on, we use words as food as well, feeding, I got to digest that for a little bit, uh, let me sleep on that, um, this feels really heavy to me. We use words, our vocabulary also describes our internal feelings. Mm -hmm. and I don't think people really hear that enough or understand that enough, that just because it's not, you're not chewing on something, you're definitely chewing on feelings. You are definitely absorbing all of these other types of nutrients into your cells based on your environment around you. And I want to just mention the outworldly a little bit because we are really stuck. Like, and people in in business focus on uh, if they're not in a health type business, if if they're doing affiliate marketing or other things, they are uh, gravitational towards the shiny objects, money, six figure, make six figures in ninety days type thing. Um, but then they forget that they, they forget about their health. They forget that about sounds their health. Like, that sounds like a new rap song. Well, if you put me on a stage with a mic and I'll drop some stuff. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> well, you could do a remix on this podcast. <laughs> oh, yo, dreams, just make it six figures. <laughs> there's your there's your opening. <laughs> I want to make six figures. Come on. I don't want to make fun of me too. <laughs> right. Right. So a lot of people get 
hooked on that shiny and then they go blind because they forget about the rest of themselves. They, they compare themselves. Same with people in health industry too. Oh, look at that model on Instagram. Why can't I be like that? Well, make that six figures. <laughs> you can get as many surgeries if you want yeah. to get that. But we consume consume is not just food. It's more than what's on your plate, right? You're, you're more than what's on your plate. Don't just focus on that plate of food or the quantity of it. Why don't you focus on your life and the quantity of that? When we cook at, at uh, home, we like tease each other when me and Sally do this. Like, oh, did you put extra love in here? And it tastes yeah. like, and that's that feeling that we try to like pray and just put that positive energy on our food. After I saw that messages in the water, Dr. Emoto stuff, like you mm -hmm. pray on the water and it crystallizes and mm -hmm. you, you speak negative to water and it just won't formulate. Uh, yeah. You're so, you're, this is so right. And it's funny how you're taking this um, spiritual, intuitive sort of God conversation and you're wrapping it around this real woman dropping beats and at the same time, super fun and let's just make it enjoyable. I think this is really what makes the flavor of what you do so yeah. entertaining and powerful. Um, we have yeah. some people here. So in case any of you guys want to drop some comments. Uh, ask some questions if you want. Some questions, absolutely. You guys have it here. Uh, Tammy says well, that that's scary. Yeah, to, to almost be stabbed and like think that you got a ghost. No, it's just the bomb shooting up in the, <laughs> the bathroom. <laughs> but uh, super crazy confirmation that that for me, and I, I mean, I, I'd like to think I'm glad you're listening, especially when it hits one, one, one on the phone. Like, yeah, it's about time you paid attention to the message. So I'm glad yeah. you did that. So you said you like when every time you said, right, and you, you followed it up with a post and you said it about two or three times. I wrote a post. I write. So are we going to get a book or is it, are you going to do, is that in the mix? Like, cause I'm pretty sure you got a book or two in you. Oh, I love writing. As you know, my whole, everything is like a big old blog. Um, I, I have always flirted with the idea of writing something. Um, I'm, I'm working on a project right now or about to with uh, a friend of mine in one of my uh, client groups, which this is funny. Let's talk about universe for a second. Cause this is creepy. Uh, so my brother, as I mentioned, is like, he's an addict of all sorts. He's also in and out of jail. He spent his 40th birthday in prison this June. Um, and I was saying to her, I was like, you know, there, there's not really much out there for people in support with siblings of addiction it's always about the parents and it's always about the person who's addicted but the siblings usually get left out of conversation the siblings usually get ignored the siblings usually get like whatever your feelings aren't true we got to worry about the addicted person right now um in less than 24 hours this post came up with someone asking about a podcast if anyone's ever heard of a podcast for this type of work and my friend and I were just talking about it and it popped up. I'm like, holy shit, is this not a sign? So I'm working on something with that right now in regards because this, I feel like that, uh, a lot of people can connect to that. And I feel like oh, um, back, back, back in the day when I was really young, I wanted to be an addictions counselor. And I'm feeling like I was uh, outside today and I was thinking to myself, is that not kind of what I am? Mm -hmm. You know, is that kind of not what I am? I just went a different way with it. Um, and so I am going to be working on some type of writing, a collaboration, um, and podcast in regards to emotional cravings within sibling addiction. I think that you'd be pretty powerful in that. And my sisters would probably watch that podcast. <laughs> 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 yeah, but I, I'm like, I'm super blessed. So, okay, we, we know you're a writer. We now know that you want to do this. Uh, just so you know, I am... Obviously, you're listening. You're listening to the Solution Artist by Via Perry out here. Could be on Spotify, iTunes. So if you need production, you let me know because I will imagine that the world just would love to hear this story as well. Uh, so what else do are we, is there as our like? I'm not going to put you know my future in you know in your mouth and say oh you're going to do events and you're going to do retreats and you're going to do this and programs and this and that. So can you give an idea? So like, what's the spectrum of how you work with someone? Do they work with you one-on-one -on -one or in a group setting? Like what's the deal? I love one-on-one -on -one is my absolute favorite way to connect with people is one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, we do zoom that's recorded. They get to keep it. We do a lot of programs within. I'm not a five step program. I loathe five steps to this and six and 10 steps and tips and stuff. I loathe those things. So we do one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, customizable mentorship work coach health programs together one-on-one -on -one for them specifically 
not some laid out pre-made thing. It's like on the spot. This is how we're going to deal with this. Um, I also currently am running a 90 day self-love mantra vibe program. Um, and I do a lot of little, little programs here and there for people to opt into some more, more affordable, some one-on-one ones, obviously a little bit more expensive an investment. Cause I mean, it's your life. Like it's, let's not play with that. Right. Um, and that's one of the things I love to do. I also host quite a bit of masterminds with other, uh, companies and corporations and different things to help oh. their businesses and stuff and employees understand because, you know, if there were more health coaches or that or whatnot in a, in a corporation, Oh my God, work practice, pro, work practice, productivity would be amazing for people to know, like you're all in the same boat. Hell yeah. Let's handle your, your emotions right now. Oh man. Cause usually at the, cause there's a whole layer and it kind of scares me just to remember this. There's a whole layer of uh, like, you know, office politics that really takes away from what you're trying to actually do in the workplace and yeah. because it took you away from it, so does the escaping. I remember working, and r- after work, we go for beers. After mm-hmm. work, we go for beers and smoke dubs, and, and even worse, and whatever. Like, th- there was that culture around, God, I got to get out of here. Beers yeah. on me. Like, let's just, like, payday beers. I'm like, yeah. oh, pay- oh, payday beers. That's a cool thing. I've never heard of that before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We do payday beers every, every payday. And it's like, oh, cool. And Chinese so, food Fridays in the office, pizza yeah. for everybody. Let's just like fill our faces with regret <laughs> for working in this office. Also regret. You know, there was one, there was one call center I worked at that they were like passing out Canucks tickets and bags of candy and like, oh, they, they like treated you very well. But then when you were at the computer, it'd be like, ah, and then, oh, they're, oh, someone's coming around to help me feel better. And they like give you a little drop of the candy and then, yeah. You know, and you line it all up and then it's back to the crap again and like this was I, I it's crazy because I have been working in front of a computer screen my whole life ever since I got into you know like like you know call center office stuff like that and there would be times when I'd have my headset on or times when I'd have two screens or times when I was doing uh you know call work stuff for like a taxi even tech support chat support and to think that like now this is what we're doing is to actually help people get to somewhere new and get to somewhere better in their life. Such mm-hmm. a crazy shift to think that we're going to change lives with this information. So I'm super blessed. I, I appreciate you guys so much for watching and, and, and I appreciate you Karen for being who you are. Thank you. The conversation that you've had with me, I, I, I'm going to say this straight up to my audience, anybody who cares about me, anyone who's worked with me, there's a reason why I'm interviewing Karen right now, okay? The reason why I'm interviewing Karen now is because I'm giving you guys my stamp of approval that you should probably go talk to this woman about who you are and about the things that are going on with you because she offers a very unique perspective that you may have uh, overlooked that may just be some of the most profound stuff that you've ever heard. And uh, yeah, I cannot wait to see some more stuff from you for sure. Uh, where's your favorite place to hang out? Like we gotta, we gotta send some people your way so how do people, how do you like people to reach out to you more than not, more than not? Hit me up in my Facebook messenger. Follow me on Facebook. I do everything from my Facebook pretty much there. It's a social, social place. You'll, you'll notice the flirtiness, the sassiness, the straightforward fun. Don't feel bad about yourself. Just love on yourself as much as possible. That's, That's what's what up. Like. Love I, back. I, and then also, hey guys, any questions? Because we're going to wrap this up in a few minutes. Tammy's saying here, uh, Karen is absolutely amazing. She has helped me break through some of the most challenging parts of my life and business. True that, Tams. True that. Tammy and I are really good friends. And uh, the, the, like what she's saying, I can absolutely echo to that completely, especially you showing up when you did, how you did, through this whole community that we're a part of. Next thing you know, I'm going through my own personal health journey. In comes a psychological connection or a, or a conversation from you, Karen. Uh, Crystal says, Karen has changed my life in so many ways. I like that. Look at that. People are here live with us. You've impacted personally. That's a wonderful feeling. So Facebook, okay, cool. Um, and so what? Do they? Someone's like, that's it. I need to sit one-on-one. Is there like a thing they just go to buy a session? Or do they have to come see you first and then you guys handle it there? Like, how does that work? Uh, no, come message me. Come talk with me. I want to find out a little bit about you. I'll have you fill out a health history form. Even if it's not health specifically related, guarantee health is going to come up. 
uh, in your life because like I said before success isn't always about you know the food on your plate some some people come to me for business advice and information well that's attached to feeling too and emotions and success in that way uh, and working through the ebb and flow of your energy in that regard so fill out a health history form I guarantee I'm going to pull something from there uh, that's going to dictate why you are the way you are Bobby works with numbers I work with your emotions I work with well, I'll probably cry <laughs> at least once <laughs> in our session. Someone will. So be prepared for that. It's very deep, but fun and loving. And just come message me. I want to know a little bit about you uh, and fill out a health history form. That's it. We go from there. That's awesome. Tammy says here, Karen taught me how to be present in my relationships, to love myself and feel wonderful in my skin and with my creative ideas. I'm glad for that. Um, I wanted to say something to you. I wanted to make sure that we got this because... You know, I, I know that a lot of people that I work with show up at the same time and the, the types of things they're dealing with are all very common. And the, usually the things I'm dealing with are lack of self-worth or maybe they, they, they don't quite feel confident in their ideas or maybe there's too much, you know, uh, failure. There's so many different things that block people from just being able to communicate their success. Do you have any words for those people who are just trying to make it happen or maybe it's just for the type of, of thing that we're dealing with right now in the current uh, time zone of our lives uh, what would you say to someone who feels like they're struggling forgive yourself and accept the fact that you're a human being and not everything is ever going to line up for you because if it's not lining up the way you think it should it's because there's another way that's waiting for you you have to get out of your head Stop living in your heart and live around your heart to see everything as it is. You know, if, if a photographer were to look at everything as art, this is the same way you should look at your life and the surroundings around you. What can I make out of this? And if you're feeling a specific way or a low energy, who's been around you that day? You know, is this belong? Does this belong to me? If not, you can say, I don't want this. This is not mine. I give it back. Just recognize your down moods are just a reflection of like, maybe you're not ready for something right now. Maybe you need a nap or <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> yeah. What happened there? So you, was that just, was that because I, I, I could tell that there was a lot of shifting energy happening yesterday as well. Gosh. Were you peering into the cosmos? Cause yeah, the other day she's like, you just need to get late or take a nap. And like, you know, today's going to get pretty nasty. So just, you know, just be aware. So what, what were you paying attention to yesterday? That was like, or in the time, how do you know that? How did you know that? I felt it. <laughs> I felt it so deeply. I woke up first thing in the morning and I'm like, people, people need to get laid or they need to take a nap or a combination of the two and maybe like have a pastrami <laughs> sandwich after. I don't know. But you guys, everyone needs to take a break, get off their computer, get off their phone, quit working for like 24 hours and just go do something you actually enjoy. And by the way, both those things and maybe a sandwich will make you feel real good afterwards. So I'll be fair. Uh, yesterday I was really stressed. It was my daughter's birthday and uh, you know, we, we had invited people and she just turned seven and I had to build her this little car thing that I bought her and you know, all of this stuff was happening and I felt like we didn't have enough time. And yet Sally and I got a chance to run around the city and walk around the mall and looking for the things we need. We're on a mission together to get stuff. And here I was frustrated about it, but then at the same time, enjoying the ability to say, you know what? I was being grounded and paused from just sitting at my computer and getting work done to going and holding my honey's hand, walking around the city and getting stuff done. So it's nice to pay attention to that. If you just surrender to the moment that you can actually have some powerful level of enjoyment in it, yeah. And you have to keep pushing and stressing on stuff. What I really like is how counterintuitive your approach is. Like you, you it's real, it's raw, it's probably not what you expect to hear, but it's <laughs> profound and it's truth. And with that, I hope you never change that part of you. So never. that part should continue to grow. But uh, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much for being a guest today. Like Thank I know you so I know much. Friends and we have this, this constant conversation, but I needed to build a stage for you. Uh, to share this platform. So if you haven't had the pleasure yet, reach out to Karen V. Ritchie. She's on my Facebook. I'll put a link in there for her. And I appreciate you guys so much for watching. Any last words, Karen, before I lead us out? Yeah. Be more, act more like a child than you are an adult in your life.
Don't go be to fine. Say she doesn't like that I act like a child more than I act like an adult. I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> go be it. Don't and, and like one thing I see with a lot of my clients is they have this big to do list. And if anyone's whoever's listening out here, because I know you are. I want you to write a what to not do list. And that is in regards to don't be such a stress case. Don't take everything so literally. Don't be such a perfectionist, you know, and because when you get that perfectionist mindset, you have a trigger somewhere. Something made you that way. Something happened that you decided you're going to be a, a perfectionist. It probably started at a really young age for that. So be the child that you missed being out when you're a kid. Go be that today. I don't care how old you could be 70 years old and listening to this, go slide down the slide, you know, <laughs> go do it. Go egg your own house. I don't know. Don't do that. That's gross. That's hard to clean up, but go buy some silly string, do something, jump around. Don't forget that inner child and also start mothering yourself. Thank you so much. Thank you guys so much for watching for listening to this, whatever channel you're on, whatever gram, book, tweet, Twitter, whatever the heck, wherever you find this, Facebook or anything, I appreciate you guys for spending the time with us and having your own profound experience. You'll absolutely be able to connect with Karen. Uh, like, subscribe, share, comment, I don't know, whatever you have to do to help this message get across to others. I'm here, I am always will be. I'm the solution artist, Bobby at Perry Hart, here with Karen V. Richie, and I appreciate you guys so much for being here. Go out there and find a slide, run down it, uh, you know, go up the slide. You know, they always tell you, they like, always tell my kids, no, 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 don't go up the slide. Go up the slide. I'm just kidding. Don't go up the slide if someone's coming down. But uh, that's just me talking to my little kids again. I appreciate you guys so much, and thank you guys so much again for watching. You have a great day. And uh, Karen, this will be one to remember. We'll talk to you guys soon, okay? Take thank care. you so much, Bobby. Bye. Bye.